Okay. Who? My name is <laughs> my name is D Ralph. My God, my name is Daryl, and I'm a real alcoholic. Uh, mm, I'm grateful. To, first of all, uh, I'd like to thank Ali and Teresa and all you guys that do such um, such a job every week doing this meeting and stuff uh the whole team of you guys it takes you know i've done a few of these and uh it takes it takes a lot it takes a lot so uh thank you i am honored i'm honored to be here with you guys on a tuesday night uh, in this 11 step meeting uh, i'm grateful to be alive and i'm grateful to be sober and if you're new or if you're relatively new if you're new to Zoom or if you're new again, I want to welcome you and share with you that when I got here, you guys gave me this program of action that was outlined in the big book, Alcoholics Anonymous. And uh, since y'all gave it to me, I haven't had to drink. My sobriety date is May the 23rd, 1993. And I know it's but for God's grace that I'm alive and I'm sober. And the reason why I share my sobriety date before every time I get ready to share is because they told me at that very first meeting, get a sobriety date and keep it. And I have kept this, Ralph, thank you so much, brother. Uh, you just don't know. Uh, you have let me have a front row uh, in the seat of recovery and in our community, man. And uh, I, I'm the ex-con drunk with a checkered past that came in here not knowing. I had never even heard of alcohol. And see, you say I got 40 minutes. So somebody just start doing all, you know, do some, send up some smoke signals, Ali, send up something. <laughs> Cause I'll go to talking better this, it'll get away from me. So, so help me out here, man. Uh, I'm the ex-con drunk that, struggled in the alcoholics. I stumbled in the Alcoholics Anonymous in distress. And I didn't even, I didn't even know I was coming to alcoholics. I, I know I, I, I <laughs> this woman, my Eskimo brought me to my very first meeting. My very first meeting was at the Crenshaw Alano Club, the Sunday afternoon relationship meeting. Ralph, I know you remember that. One. We was in the big hall over there on Lamert. And just to let you know, and I got a long way to go and a short time to get there. Uh, I chose a topic that's at the end of step 11. And it came, it came on page 88. And, uh, and I'll start like this. When I was in school, my, my professor said, if you want to get the real essence of the contact of what you read, read a progress before, and then read a progress, a paragraph after. So you can kind of know, get the gist of where the text is going. And see, I'm <laughs> my home group on Zoom is the is the is, is the never too early big big workshop. Okay. Uh, 9604 is my A home group. But we do I have been fortunate enough especially here on Zoom, to grab this book again. I don't know. And I'm just, and see, I don't know why I'm getting honest with y'all. I really don't, I really don't fool with y'all like that. But I'm, <laughs> it had been a long time. Right before the pandemic, I can remember the last time I had picked up this book. And I, and that's not, and that, that does not mean I have, wasn't being a servant. You know, Ralph told you I was a chair of the board over that 9604 hours being said, but for me to physically pick up this book, it had been a minute. So when they, when we shut the window, when they shut the world down, I was fortunate enough to have enough in my spiritual bank account that I, picked up, was able to pick up this book again. And if you don't mind, I just want to read uh, the paragraph that starts on, on 87. And I chose as a topic, it works. It really does. 
And it says, we go through the day we pause when agitated or doubtful and ask for the right thought or action. We constantly remind ourselves we are no longer running the show. Humbly saying to ourselves many times each day, thy will be done. We are then in much less danger of excitement, fear, anger, worry, self-pity, or foolish decisions. I underlined that, so maybe you might want to underline that, foolish decisions. Because at 28 years of sobriety, that still happens. I'm sorry, I'm getting way too honest for y'all. Excuse me. We become much, <laughs> We become much more efficient. We do not tire so easily, for we are not burning up energy foolishly as we did when we were trying to arrange life to suit ourselves. It works. It really does. We alcoholics are undisciplined. So we let God discipline us in the simple way we have just outlined. But this is not all. There is action and more action. Faith without works is dead. The next chapter is entirely devoted to step 12. Uh, as I stated, I chose that topic. Uh, after I prayed, when Ali told me that, uh, that, that he, he wanted me to come, that came up because I was ready. We're in, matter of fact, uh, in the workshop, we're in sort of step 12. So we had just read, and you know, a bunch of stuff was here, a bunch of stuff in my personal life. Ralph just talked about it. I got a bunch of stuff going on in my personal life, in my physical life, in my financial life. It's just stuff. But when I made it to Alcoholics Anonymous, I stumbled in here in disgrace. And coming to Alcoholics Anonymous, I didn't know. What, al what, what Alcoholics Anonymous were. When I wa first walked to the door, there was a man standing there. He's my friend to this day. He shook his hand out and he shook my hand and then he grabbed me and hugged me, scared the shit. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cuss. I know it's dignitaries in here. Y'all just, I'm trying to tell this right. But the man hugged me. He grabbed me and he hugged me. My whole body tensed up. I'm telling you, I still, I'm an ex-con drunk. I still was in a prison halfway house. I had one foot in the penitentiary and the other foot on the streets. So when this man hugged me, it scared me to death. And then he let me go. And he said, my name is David and I'm an alcoholic. And I said, my name is Daryl, bro. He said, Daryl, welcome here. Go in there, get you a cup of coffee and have a seat. And at that very first meeting, before I ever heard, identify with the feelings being shared. Before I ever heard anything about 12 steps or 12 traditions. Before I even heard anything about concepts of service or, or service commitments or any of that. What I did here was the language of the heart. There was a man that came to that club and I got to know him personally. At the end of his pitch, he was always here. You burn into the consciousness of every new man that he can get sober in spite of anything or anybody. The only requirement being that he trusts God and he clean house. So in that very first minute, it was sayings like that that took me on this roller coaster ride. And once you got up and started sharing your stories, how 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 devastating this disease had to one one guy his name was dr ralph you might remember him his name was dr dan he would talk about feeling like he had been drugged down the street on the back of a truck feeling like something the cat had drugged in those are when people told their stories like that and then right after that they say now i'm free i don't know about you I don't know how you drank. I don't know how you did all the things that you needed to do to get to Alcoholics Anonymous, but I wanted to be free. I didn't want to keep waking up, searching, 
for where I was going to get the next one for the because I don't know about you. They described my condition when I got here. They said, if you feel like you're hopeless, and, I, and my ears perked up, right? And then he described hopeless. He said, hopeless is wanting to stop and just can't. That's who I was when I got here. And once they were taught, everyone that went to the podium, they say the program works. Here we go. This, 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 it works. It really does, right? I'm going somewhere. Just stay with me here. Everyone that got to the podium, they said the program of Alcoholics Anonymous works. Then they, talk, they talked about being honored and fortunate to be a member of Alcoholics Anonymous. I couldn't understand that, but I felt it. I felt the language of the heart. But right after that, they didn't, they threw a curve at me. They said somewhere in there, he said, I will suddenly realize that God is doing for me what I couldn't do for myself. I said, oh, here we go. We we have we have one of these church functions and pretty soon then they passed the basket so you know that told me up I was just I was like oh man <laughs> okay uh, but then the, the second part of the meeting they did everybody that did it they, they, so I wanted this freedom I'm talking about in my very first meeting I wanted this freedom but then y'all keep talking about. God is either everything or he's nothing. I started hearing more and more about this. God will suddenly, you said, I will suddenly realize that God's doing for me what I couldn't do for myself. I said, okay, here we go with this again. So by the end of the meeting, a man pulled me to the side. And he said, don't worry about that right now. Don't worry about your ideas of God. Don't worry about that. You know, because I was a good church going, I, you know, young man in my community, good, go to good young deacon in my church, you know, the whole. So I had these ideas of what I thought religion was or spirituality. I, spirituality wasn't a term that I, I threw out loosely when I first got here. But they told me this is a spiritual problem. And then I said, okay, by the end of that meeting, they said, if you, if there's anybody here in their first one to 29 days, would you please stand up, state your name? This is not to embarrass you, but so we can get to know you better after the meeting. Baby, before he could finish his sentence, I was up waving my head. If it was like I was waving the white flag. I said, my name's Daryl and I'm an alcoholic. I don't know how I jumped up out of that seat like that. I can't remember. All I know is that I did it. And what I do know is this. Since I declared that, because I have, I say, my name is Daryl and I'm an alcoholic. And to declare something means to speak loud. I said, I'm Daryl. I'm a, I believe right there. God removed the obsession for me to drink because I have not had a drink since that very first meeting of Alcoholics Anonymous. And that was 28 years ago. Right. So but now I wasn't talking like this when I got you. Remember, I told you I had them, this thing going on with God. God wasn't fooling with me. You know, I'm the ex-con drunk that, you know, messed off a good civil service job. And my high school, I married my high school sweetheart. She got away from me. She didn't just move up the street. She, I ain't got time for all of that. I need to get to my point. My point is, and we agnostics. When God said, God don't make too hard a term for those who seek. This program is broad and roomy and all inclusive. So what you're saying to me is even though I had did what I did, my, the last time I saw my mama, she pulled a 45 on me and said, I don't even want you on my block, let's go on my porch. Ex-wife all moved halfway around the world to get away from me. 
that good civil service job. I was working at LA Unified School since I was 18 years old. Now I'm 26. They called, my mother called, my mother sent my sister to find me. I had a letter from my job. I hadn't been to work in over a year. The letter said, Mr. Gardner, if you refuse to report to work by Monday, we will be forced to terminate your position. I hadn't been to work in a year. Screwed me up. You know, I went to jumping up. I still got a job. Oh, I had to go celebrate that, man. Me and the boys. Were, but once I sat down on that couch and turned that thing up, that invisible seatbelt wrapped around, I could not get up off. I couldn't do it. I couldn't. And Monday at 8 o'clock came and went. So you know I had to. Now, I'm, <laughs> I'm starting to experience, uh, you know, all those bedevilments and and all of the, you know, the, <laughs> uh, my God, having trouble with personal relationships and pray to misery and depression and uh, were full of fear, unhappy, couldn't seem to be no real help for nobody. I just, I mean, you can just start reading on and on. How in the world can I get rid of all of this stuff? They brought up that God idea again. They brought it up to me again. They said in step three, in the 12 and 12, it says it's like an approaching a door that by all appearance would appear to be closed and locked. The only thing that you need to open that lock is a key. And what is the key? The key is willingness. <laughs> I start scratching my head. Where the willingness come from? My friend says it real good. I can't say it like he said, but it's a good tailor-made. Uh, wore me out. When I think about it, uh, I, I was reading here recently and I was listening to a man talk. And he said, I needed to humble myself enough. And the only way I could do that is through the grace of God. I need you to humble myself enough where the grace of God will allow me to go back to the treasures of my subconscious mind. And I, I perked up. He said, because it is in those treasures that you can remember how good God has been to you. And you will be able to remember walking up and down the street at two or three o'clock in the morning with nowhere to go. In the eighties, it was it was in the eighties in South Central. It was like the wild wild west. We was walking down the street with pistols and baseball bats at two o'clock in the morning. It, it, at two o'clock in the morning, it looked like it's broad daylight. It, I'm telling you, it was just. Whew. When I think about some of this, I got a I got a chill right now, thinking about it. So to get to this treasure to make me remember how God has done for me what I couldn't do. They asked, you, they asked me a question. They said, did you want a drink today? I said, no. They said, did you even think about drinking today? I said, no. I said, it must be. <laughs> they said, it must be a power greater than yourself. So now they said, Daryl, you need to start writing some stuff down, talking about resentment, fears, sex. Write it down, write some stuff down. They gave me the instructions. I ain't got time to go through all of that right now, but they gave me instructions to do all of that kind of stuff. And I did it. I jumped in with all four friends. It says being convinced. My life ran on my will could hardly be a success. Then a little later on, it talks about selfishness and self-centeredness be the root of my trouble. They also said that this selfishness must be smashed or it will kill me. Look, Daryl, look at your own experience. You got here one foot in the penitentiary. 
If you go back, if you go take one drink, guess where you go? They said it gets worse, never better. So in, six, in, in, in step five, I got a chance to unload some of the stuff that I was feeling. I got a chance to talk about how, how, how guilt and shame had just robbed me of everything. You know, like I said, <clears throat> my mama pulled a gun on me. I didn't. She said, you ain't got a pot to piss in or the window and throw it out. Look at you. You th I was 35 years old. Didn't know. So in, 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 in five, I got a chance to read that stuff. Six and seven, you remember I talked about having that grace and that humility to humbly ask God to remove my shoulder. Now, I, I hear people talking about, and I was at a meeting couple of weeks ago and this lady was sharing one of my good friends was sharing she said you know I could stop in the middle of the day and change my day all I got to do is say a quiet prayer and I could be driving in the car I could be you know walking down the street I could be sitting in the park he said she said but when I really want to get God's attention I'll get on my knees <laughs> now me I can't, I'm 275 pounds. I got arthritis in both of my hips. Me, get on my knees, it'll take a, a, a forklift to get, get me. I'm sorry, y'all ain't got no business laughing at that. But, <laughs> but check this out. There comes a time in my life, no, I ain't going to talk about you. Let's talk about Daryl. There has come a time where I've had to get down, like Betty T used to say, on your agnostic, I had to get down on my agnostic knees because I needed God's attention. I need humble, humility and grace to move, to move forward. So once I did that, I was able to make my list. And I was able to write the wrong, make a mint. I was able to write the wrong. You remember that talk, I talked about that mom? Talked about that ex-wife? And I'll share more about those things before my mother died. My mother died when I was four years old. She got a chance to see her oldest boy. A productive member of society. I was, back then, Ralph, you remember, I was working for the Orkin. I was working for Orkin. I was the Orkin man. I would drive my orchid truck to me and, you know, it was my goal to become the best roach killer in Los Angeles. That was just what I wanted to do. That... But my mother passed away. How do you deal with feelings such as that? At the end of on page 88, it works. Now, once, once I did that, uh, that writing and made those amends to my mother, to my ex-wife, to my son, to everybody. You know, I did the best that I could with what I had. Then I come to, then we come to step 10. It says, now we have entered into the world of the street. I'm walking, Ralph says, I'm walking on the sunny side of the street. That old thinking is not there anymore. So now we get to step 11. And in step 11, I re you remember I said when I first got here that it had been a minute, it had been a minute since I had picked up a book. Zoom has been a wonder to me. My God, my, 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 my sobriety has taken a leap to another dimension. I've read, I've had been, now, <laughs> now, let me just throw this in here for free. 
in the middle of a pandemic in May 20, May, May 6th of 2020. I was diagnosed with uh, metastatic high-risk prostate cancer that had spread to my lymph node. Scared me to death. Cancer killed my mother. Scared me to death. I was scared to death. But Zoom, these Zoom meetings, I, I'm the secretary of a uh, attitude adjustment meeting every Friday morning. And I'll put that information in the chat. That was a free plug. I'll put that in the chat uh, at the end of the meeting. But they told me that I needed to do uh, 28 radiation treatments, five days a week for six weeks, every day, Monday through Friday. I lay down on that slab and I had these headphones in my ear listening to y'all walk me off the ledge. And see, in the 11th step, the first part of it is, I think it starts on page 86. It says, when we retire at night, we ask these, was I resentful? Was I selfish? Was I dishonest? I mean, we go down the whole list. We review our day. We ask God's forgiveness for any sins that we could could have made. And we ask God to, I ask God to make me a better person tomorrow. Then it goes a step further than that because upon awakening, we think about the next 24 hours. We consider what we're going to do before we, we ask God to divorce our thinking for any selfish self-seeking motives and all of that and down at the bottom of page 86 it says if we continue to practice this we ask god for inspiration or intuitive thought we relax and we take it easy see when i spoke here last year i had just finished those treats and halfway through my pitch i went to crying you know why? Because I was scared. Chris, he talked, uh, he shared about three weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago. He says his default was anger. I found out my default was fear. When you start talking about my health, I mean, can't something that's going to kill me scared me to death. Scared me to death. But what I had to do, first thing I had to do, was go back to the treasure of my subconscious mind. I had to I had to share with myself that if God can remove the obsession for me to drink alcohol, <laughs> cancer ain't nothing him. I had to. Be, I was scared, but I believed it. Somebody pointed that out to me. Daryl, he said, Daryl, look where you came from. Dude, you was fresh out the penalty. The only clothes you had was them state clothes. The only shoes you had was them state shoes. God allowed, turn your life, remove the obsession from you. You became a respectable businessman in this computer. I'm trying to tell y'all that this program, that this thing works, it really does. I, I hope you get in this. God, God made you a responsible businessman in this community. People, you would walk in the good door and they would say, Mr. Gardner, I'm an ex-con drunk with a checkered past. Then not only that, God, when the real estate market crashed, God allowed you to lose everything. No, I say God allowed it because God knew exactly what was happening. Because at, then at 52 years old, I was able to go back to school and at 54 years old, I graduated from college and I was able to work into, in the field that I retired at two years ago. It works, it really does. Why? Because this prayer and this meditation, I had to, this, it says it in the book, when it's woven together, it creates an unshakable foundation. <laughs> Wait a minute. You don't know you got an unshakable foundation 
till your foundation is shaking. I know that was a high poop pit flew right over your head. You missed it. I'm going to give it to you again. You don't know. You got an unshakable foundation until your foundation has been shaken. My foundation is shaken. Just that quick. Just, just like just like that. After, after, let you know how, let me put a face on this. This 11 step stuff. Uh, this, it, it, it becomes an unshakable foundation. And uh, if you continue, it says here, we used to be, what used to be a hunch would be an occasional inspiration gradually becoming a working part of the mind. So if I'm praying and if I'm medicating, if, I, if I'm going back to that, those treasures, I'm looking back at my life. See how good God has been. I, I, am in, I am encouraging myself. Because sometimes I can, Ralph, sometimes you ain't going to answer the phone. Ali, sometimes I can't get in touch with you. Calvin, sometimes I call you. You say, Daryl, I'm busy. I got to call you back. I got to get in touch. I got to encourage myself. I got to, I got to hold myself like this. And remember that God says he's my refuge and my strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. And the key word in that sentence is present. present. It means right now. I don't know about you. Sometimes I need God now. And I need even know. So I was able to walk through the fear. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. I was able to get that. I'm trying to put a face on this. So now I'm, I'm changing my eating habits. I'm, do, I'm ex exercising. I'm going to the pool, doing water aerobics in the pool to help this, this arthritis. I'm doing all of this stuff. And I think, so that was in 2020. So I finished all of that. So last year, about 2021, around, around this time last year, I talked about it. I shared all my fears, all of that stuff. At last, in, in, in October, they told me to take another, a new, what they call a nuclear scan. When the scan came back, they said, Daryl, this cancer has spread to your spot, to your both of your hips. Yeah, that word is again. You know, my default was fear. But when the doctor said that, I didn't I didn't jump off the ledge like I did when I first got not, when I first got diagnosed. I remember what this what you guys have given me. They said this prayer and meditation, and and they they also used another word. Uh, the, 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 uh, selfish, uh, uh, unforgetting. They they use. They said when you wove when it's woven together creates an unshakable foundation. So when the doctor told me that it's right, you know what my response was to him then? Let's go, doc. What we got to do to fix it? What we got to do, what we got to take, we got to go do some more radiation. What we got to, it just started rolling. It surprised me. When they said, when this book said it becomes a working part of your mind, they ain't lying. It's, 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 uh, it's automatic. It becomes the exact word. Where's my glasses? It becomes a word. It says, being still experienced, having just made conscious contact, it is probable that we're going to be inspired. We might pay. Da, 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 da. It says here, we come to rely on it. We rely on it. So I came home and I didn't tell no. I, didn't, I told Debbie. I told the wife. 
I didn't tell nobody. I didn't tell my sisters. I didn't tell none of my children. None of that stuff. I just kept doing what I was doing. I still kept working with folk. I still kept going to my commitments. I still kept doing all. I still, I still kept praying. I still kept, I still kept reading these books. Two weeks later, urologist called me. Said, Daryl, we made a mistake. It's arthritis in both your hips. We got something to treat that. <laughs> to put a face. Now that's how you put a face on. It works. It really does. Cause you got to. There's things that you got to do. You got. You got to go to meetings. You got. It says trust God, clean house, help others. That they said this program is simple as the ABC. A, then I'm an alcoholic and I cannot manage my own life. B, probably no human power could relieve my alcoholism. C, God could and would if he saw. If you don't get nothing else, I say. That's the program in a nutshell. So, okay. I got you. Thanks, me. Uh, whew, I'm glad I got a chance to get that off. Because since he asked me to share that, and I started reading through the end to the, I read through through to end. You know, like I said, my my uh, when I was in school, my professor always said he said, "Man, you need to read about a paragraph, a couple of paragraphs before and after to get a whole." And when it hit me, it said, "It works. It really does." I said, "Well, I got some experience in that." I come here, I got here to y'all as an ex-con drunk with a checkered pass. And I ain't got time to get into how before I was 10 years sober, I was engaged to three different women and ain't married none of them. Let's talk about that. <laughs> I had to, Betty, I was at the, my sponsor is Carl Peterson. I had to go sit in Carl Peterson's house and let them almost i mean by the time they got through with me with the at that 12 and 12 i almost threw it and broke his picture window because i needed to see how selfish and self-centered i was i needed to see how delusional i was i'm talking about in my first 10 years but once I did that inventory that's in the 12 and 12 that's a whole nother story if you want to know more about that you can ask me after the meeting but I had to get through that to get to where I, God used that as a vehicle to get me where I am now. And where I am now is I'm a grateful and fortunate alcoholic that's blessed to be alive and honored to be here with you guys. I'm honored that you guys call me your friend. You guys are way in in Ontario, Kent. Ain't no way to hit my I almost cussed. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get better. Ain't nowhere in the world I'd have met y'all. God knew what He was doing. He put you. He strategically placed y'all in my life for this day right here. And I'm. I'm, I'm proud. And what my job is now is to make y'all proud to do you right like bill w i mean uh, dr bob said to bill w before he turned to walk out that door he said don't louse this thing up every time i share it is my prayer that somebody feels the language of the heart i don't get up here trying to do no big book studies and all that i share what i used to be like what happened and what I'm like today. At this particular, this particular, my assignment was sought through prayer and meditation to improve my conscious contact with God as I understand him, praying only for the knowledge of him and the power to carry that out. I hope that little illustration that I shared with you put a face on it. This is, wait a minute. Let me just read this and stop, and I'm going to stop. 
right after it, he said, uh, it works, it really does. He said, <laughs> we alcoholics are undisciplined. So we let God discipline us in a simple way we have out, just outlined. But that is not all. There is action and more action. Faith without works is dead. I'm going to leave y'all with that. I'm going to let you chew on that for a minute. <laughs> because every time I think on my pity pot about this cancer, this, or my hips, that, and I can't hardly walk. God lets me know. There is still more work to do. There are still more people to touch. Can't nobody, there's some people on here, my story will never touch. But there's somebody in here that needed to hear this today. I'm grateful to be alive and I'm grateful to be sober. I love you.